Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. Man, I'm glad that you're here today. We are uh, we're taking one step forward in our relationship with God. We're not sprinting. We're not running a marathon. You're not going to pull a biblical hamstring by, uh, by working too hard here today. But we are going to be intentional. And if we're intentional every single day, man, God does a lot of work in our life. We cover a lot of ground through the scriptures. And every day, we start off with the right foot forward. We start off intentional in our relationship with him, focusing on him at the beginning of the day, carrying us through the day. So we are in the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis, and uh, we're going to be wrapping up. Well, we're actually going to start in Genesis chapter two, and, and we're going to kind of look at two principles today. One, about how the Bible's put together, uh, that we kind of have <clears throat> an interesting thing that comes up here in Genesis chapter two. And then the other about the content, which is uh, related to what we talked about this last weekend at church about the Sabbath day of rest. So, so let's jump in this. Genesis chapter two, verse one, it says this. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was completed. On the seventh day, God had finished his work of creation. So he rested from all his work and God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy because it was the day that he rested from all his work of creation. And we're going to pause there. And in verse 4 it says, This is the count of creation. This is the count of creation of the heavens and the earth. All right. So, so then what happens there is then now it goes from this poem to a narrative. And then it tells the story, not with the, the days lined out, not with the rhythm and the pattern, all those things, but just kind of a narrative. And it kind of continues from there. So, let's just pause here for a second and just make an observation here. Doesn't it seem like those verses should be in the first chapter? <laughs> like, why did the chapter come, that, that chapter break come kind of at the, before the poem was done? Here's the reason why. Well, actually, we don't know the reason why, but here's something important to know is that chapters and verses weren't in the Bible when it was first written. When Moses was, was writing down the first five books of the Bible, he wasn't writing down chapter, verse, putting all these notations in there. That wasn't part of the original manuscripts. Um, this is something that was added much, much later as a help, right? This, this is very useful to have chapters and verses. We can go to different parts of the Bible easily. Um, we can look things up. It's easy. To, it helps us to memorize. It helps us to, you know, navigate, you know, just think about it in your small group. If there were chapters and verses, you're like, hey, go to, you know, uh, three quarters of the way through the book of Matthew. And, you know, it would, it's very, very helpful. But it's not part of the original manuscript. In fact, chapters were really added into the Bible uh, until the 1200s. Uh, and then verses were added in about the 1500s. And the, the 1200s is pretty uh, good consensus. Who did that? It was a, a, a theologian in, in Paris, um, added the, the chapters in there about 1220, 1220s. Um, in the 1500s, a lot of different Bible publishers started adding in the verses to make it easy. As more people were having the Bible, it was more important to be able to kind of narrow down where you're at and, and get to specific passages easier. So these were added later. And as we look at this one here, we like, man, it, I think you kind of put the, the, the chapter break in the wrong spot. I think maybe you should have put it after verse four. That would have been a, a better place to, to put that. But we're not here to play Monday morning quarterback. I'm sure he had a reason. He wasn't just, he wasn't just some goofball doing this. He wasn't doing it randomly. He was a theologian. He had his reasons for doing it. The point is that when we come across chapters and verses, this is something we added later for help of navigating through it. There's a factual thing about Bible study here today. Now, let's not, get, let's not leave it there. Let's get down to what the passage says. It's talking about the Sabbath day of rest, that God created the entire universe. And in, in, in this point, he sets out this pattern for living. And the way that this is communicated, this, this way this poem is written, that there are six days of work, one day of rest. Why? Because God wants us to follow that pattern. It's a reminder built into creation from the very beginning. Um, God is drilling down some huge concepts here in this, uh, this poem. This poem is meant to communicate that, first of all, that God created the heavens and the earth, that there was a beginning. There was a time when the universe didn't exist before this, and there is a time where it came into existence fully and 100% as a result of God's decision to do so. He did it with order. There was purpose to it. It wasn't just random. He systematically brought the universe into existence. And 
as this poem is laid out, this six days of work, one day of rest, this is set a pattern for us to live by. Now, as we look at a passage like this, it's a poem. It has some big concepts. What are we supposed to take away as literal? And what are we supposed to take away as a an assign, as kind of a, um, a, a frame to communicate these things? You know, did God create the universe in six literal 24-hour periods of time? He could have, absolutely. There's absolutely nothing uh, that our God cannot do. There's no reason to, to think that he didn't do this. However, there is no requirement that he did do it in this area. Remember, we're, we're looking at a piece of poetry. So the point is that God made it. The point is that he did it with order. Now this day framework could that be the, the exact way he's doing it, or is he communicating something bigger? The idea of order, the idea of Sabbath rest. Now, before we make a decision on that, we're going to jump into the next passage tomorrow, uh, this narrative, and we're going to compare these two. And I think that will give us some uns insight into how we look at chapter one, uh, how we look at this poem, and how we take out what is meant to be taken literally, and what is meant to be taken as a framework. We have to remember here, the Bible is not written as a, a scientific book. It's not meant to do that. It's not meant to communicate so much exactly how the universe was created, but why it was created, and what our responsibilities are in these patterns that God's are, God is laying down. But we're gonna get into that a little bit more tomorrow. The point is that we're, we're wrapping up this, this first chapter poem, that this, the the rhythm of the poem actually gives us the rhythm of our life. Uh, that God has designed this into the universe, this seven-day week. <laughs> How do we get a seven-day week? It goes into the cycles of the moon. Uh, we get our the number of months in a year based on the amount of, well, the day comes from how quick the earth rotates. Uh, the year comes from the earth rotating around the sun. Who put all, the, all that into existence? God did. It talks about him putting the planets and the stars and the sun and the moon and our solar system into existence. God designed the world to operate in this way. And within this design, there are rhythms. And one of these rhythms is rest. And he lays this out. He demonstrates it. He models it for us. So we must be about rest. We, we talked, I talked about this a lot more this, this past weekend as we uh, are, are kicking off the series about who's in control. And who's in control of our time? Well, we can, we can try to control our schedules. Sometimes it feels like our schedules are controlling us, but what would it look like to do and give God control of our time, of our, our schedule, our rhythms? And, and fundamentally, part of that goes back to this rhythm built into creation uh, that God has given us as a gift, a gift of rest. And maybe you know someone that needs to hear that this morning. And maybe you know someone that's, that's burning the candle on, on both ends. Uh, doesn't mean to share this with someone, doesn't mean that you have it all figured out. You don't have to be perfect in this area to share it with someone. You'd be like, hey, I'm, I'm really working on this. I'm struggling with time and, you know, this was helpful to me. I hope it's helpful to you. Let's be sharers of, of the word. What God is teaching us, let us share it with other people. Hey, this is what I'm learning. You don't have to teach them. You don't feel like you're instructing people all the time. But sharing how God is stretching and growing you uh, will have an impact on others. Whether you do that through, through you communicating to them or sharing a video, inviting people to follow along in the daily race. Love to be, uh, to just grow our community here as we invite people to meet Jesus and follow him with our lives. All right, let's go ahead and pause and pray and let's get our day started. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for giving us another day. Another day that you've given us purpose. Another day that you've given us opportunities. Another day that you've given us meaningful work to do. And God, help us to remember throughout this whole day that, that we work as, as unto you. Um, that you deserve all our best efforts in, in, in all our, our, our endeavors here today. So God, we, we thank you for the day. And God, we just pray that we would work as you would work, that, that we give it our best each and every day. Uh, but we pause once a week, we celebrate you, we worship, we rest, and we thank you for that. We, we trust that you can do more in six days than we can do in seven. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. Look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.